Okay, so I have no PlayStation browser, and you see I'm downloading these two games here, Adventure Valley Album and Project Stealth. Our Adventure Valley Album just finished, and Project Stealth will finish as well. Remember, Project Stealth is a Unity game, so, you know. Now, fun to note, um, it's impossible to decrypt PlayStation mobile games except on a Vito, and for very like finicky hijacking of the main executable that then tells it to read all the files out and dump it and sometimes it just crashes the whole system. So um, and also it doesn't work on Unity games, it only works on you know PSSC on uh, retail games. It also doesn't work on developer assistant. Okay so you just finished downloading so here inside simulator right if you see if I go into PSM folder I go into PSM, um, and just go into one of these, and arrow, right, there's no way to, there's actually no way to simulate the Unity games, so I'm not going to, try. if I go into this one, Adventure, if I go into Adventure by Album, right, and I try run, say, Apple EXE, you should see it comes up, but then it just, just kills, yeah, because it can't, it can't read the file, right, because this is encrypted. If I over here to hex editor, just to see if this hex editor will load, It'll take a bit. Okay, so hex editor, you see here, PSSE, pretty awesome, so it's encrypted, right? So, and then also, I have another thing in my PSM folder, and this one is badapplepsm.psdp. This is a um, developer assistant package, and you'll notice if I extract this, and go into Battle PSM application, and check app.exe here, you'll see this app.exe is also encrypted, but note this one does not have a content ID. Okay, so what can we do about this? So I, well, traditionally, we'd have to get on the Vito, and we'd have to install fuck PSSE plugin, and we'd have to run the games and decrypt them. But that only worked on the retail PSM, not the Unity PSM or P or developer assistance, and it was incredibly limiting. Sometimes it crashed a lot, and it just had so many problems. Now we have this nice Pi script called decrypts.py. I wrote, I reverse engineered a lot of stuff in order to make this work. I used like the Android version and the Vita version, and even the um, the uh, DOL file for encrypting PS PSSE on PC. I used basically all three of those. It got stuck. I used the Vita version at first and hooked the um, AES decrypt function and then got stuck because the IV kept changing. I was like, I need a debugger, but I can't attach a debugger. Then I remembered that when I tried doing the Android version, couldn't get it to work. Um, had basically the same problem where I couldn't understand how, what was happening. And then I did the um, the Windows PSM encrypto DOL, and I realized I could attach a debugger to that. So I did a debugger and figured it out pretty quickly. And the code that what was actually happening is um, it's the role IV function in here. Yeah, IV role. Yeah, this is what was actually happening. So it's basically just creating a by the way of the original IV and then creating a new by the way that's just the um, current offset, like the current block ID as like an integer. Alright, and then it just XORs like that with the new with the original IV and that's the new IV. It took forever to work that out. Uh, but yeah, this has the code, I'll just briefly go over it. This part here, um is basically this part here basically just finds like which part of the um file is actually the file contents. So if I request like if I say I get Bjork a zero, it will only give me the like this handle is getting the Bjork from like the PSSE encrypted file and then decrypting it and then sending it back. So that's what this does. This skips, this makes sure if it's the first one, it starts um, 0x20 and this makes sure it skips every 0x80 thousands um, because there's like some weird signature block in there. And then in decrypt file, you know, this is the main thing. So these are, these are some keys that I found. If anyone likes keys, I'm sure we all like keys. Alright, here's some keys. This is um, the IV that's used for the PSC header. This is the key that's used to decrypt the PSC header. This is the key that's used to decrypt the PSC header in PSM dev. And this is the app key for the runtime libraries. So like sce.core.psc 
I mean SCE.PlayStation.Call.DOL, MS Corrib, System.DOL, and other things that are built into the runtime. So, and then this is just verifying the header, and then checking the version, checking the size, which is located here, and then checking the type, and making sure it's one. Then it reads the content ID, and if the content ID is equal to this content ID, it's used by the runtime package for SC PlayStation Call, MS Call Yib, and etc. Then it just sets the game key to the runtime game key. If it doesn't find a content ID, if it just finds a bunch of zeros, then PSM dev is set to true. And if the content ID does not match the red content ID, then it tells you, well, that doesn't work, and just gets mad at you. Actually, this, this is this is actually got a bug. It should it should exit. Um, okay. <laughs> So, and then if it doesn't see a game key, it then just tells you, look, I can't decrypt it without a game key. So, next it goes to, you know, it reads the MD5, which is actually stored at 0x40, is an MD5 hash at 0x40. It reads that, and then the then it seeks to here, which is the head, PSSE header. It then decrypts the PSSE header, and that gives it the IV, and then it uses the game key to get request all the blocks in order and then puts them into the file. That's basically what that does. And then here it finally compares if the MD5 from the ha from the decrypted data matches the one in, in the top. Okay, so where do you get the game key from? Well, game key comes from... Um, if I can find it. Game key comes from... It can come from two places. In PSM dev, it comes from the publisher key. And in um, retail games, it comes from the riff. So here it says it reads some fake .rif, and you see all it does is it just seeks to 0x40, reads the content ID, reads the content ID, or that's how it gets the content ID it compares to. Then it seeks to 0x120 and then reads 10 bytes and that's the game key. So yeah. Um, for publisher keys it's a bit it's a bit more complicated. So <laughs> um, what this basically does is it, is it gets the um the private key P12 file and then it reads it and then it sets the passphrase here, the password, because that's the passphrase that's used on all of the private, private keys for PSM. Um, and it just uses, and then it gets a release, and then that reads the HK app file, which is the key ring, the app key or key ring thing. Um, Alright, then it reads the magic, if it's this, then it skips forward, 0x48 bytes, otherwise it doesn't skip forward. And then it just seeks to here to 0x200 plus the offset, of course. Reads 100 bytes, uses the private key to decrypt that. Then the then the actual app key can be found at 0xc0 and the IV at 0xd0 e0. Right, and these are keys for the. This is actually not the game key. This is actually the key for this block at 0x80 in the um, H key. And then it reads 240 bytes in that, decrypts it with AES, and then here at 00, zero is some value of reds, but I don't know what quite sure, quite sure it's for. It's another value of not sure it's for, but then act finally the game key can be found at 0x60 and 0x70 in that decrypted AES decrypted buffer, and then it just closes the H key and then tells you what the keys were. So yeah. And this of course will explain get block, before explain decrypt file. So that's basically it, and then the last thing at the bottom is some checking arguments, if you passed any, and then if you passed four arguments, and it assumes it's a developer assistance file, and you see here it uses, like, reads the publisher key, and then it calls read publisher key, and then it checks if it's a file, so if this is so you can decrypt the runtime packet, like the runtime libraries if you want, you can just specify that the runtime library directly, and it will just decrypt it. Alright, and then so that's the arrow path. Arrow path is basically where it's going to look inside the folder you specified. So by default, it looks in slash arrow slash application, but otherwise it's slash application. And if you're not using PSM dev, oh, I went past that. So if you're not using PSM dev, then the license file is at slash arrow slash license slash fake dot riff. Alright, obviously it's no PSM DOM doing that, it gives you that fake riff. And it checks if the path exists, if the license exists, and if it doesn't, then it goes, oh, I can't find the license, sorry. Then if it does exist, it reads the game key, and then we tell us what the game key was. Oop, I keep, I keep scrolling up too much. Okay, so then it reads the PSSE list, which is just the 
file you specified, PS arrow path, PS PSSE, yes. God, God damn it. <laughs> okay. So, reads the PSSES, and then that's path the PSSES, and then decrypts the PSSES, and then replaces all the slash arrows with nothing, and then the speeds at slash n. So, basically, that, that's basically just how I handle like different line endings, right? If it's like slash n or like slash r slash n, I just want it to be slash n, so I'm just going to remove the slash arrows. <laughs> it's pretty dumb of a solution, but it works. So. Then it just goes goes over every single file in the PSSC file list, right? Every PSSC file in the file list. If it's nothing, then it just does nothing. If there's no PSC file specified, that was just a fix and bug I was having, where sometimes it would say, "Oh, I can't decrypt nothing." I'm like, "Why are you trying to decrypt nothing?" So I put a check in. If it's nothing, then don't decrypt it. Um, okay, so then it checks the path is file and code. And PTF8, right, and then now it's path, just arrow path, so remember arrow path wise. Then it decrypts it, right, and then if the path exists, right, then we decrypt the file, and then write the decrypted file back to the original file. And then finally, once all of that's done, we then write the decrypted PSSES back, and we say done. So that's basically it. That's basically all the code here, so let's just test this out, alright. So let's do pi. Decrypt pi, PSM, um, MPPA, right? P this is um, this was Adventure by Abramf. You should see it. It should run through, and give it a sec. Python is slow. All right, so see now it's decrypting all files inside there, and it's just finished that. So now if we head up to PSM, um, MPPA, arrow application and we open app exe now we should see it says this program can't be run in DOS mode which tells us it's decrypted and of course if we head over to PSM there PSM simulator which I open it with that it will probably work yep as you can see it works Awesome, and also we can decrypt Unity games for the first time ever. We have, we've never been able to decrypt Unity games before, but as you can see here, here is Unity game has a runtime folder, right? And if I just run this on this, it's that one. Um, it will it will decrypt it. It's not Unity games. So many files are actually encrypted in them, but it does have a few. All right, and so we're going to Arrow Application Data Manage. Right, and we'll see Unity, SMB C Sharp, and you'll see now this one here is also decrypted. Awesome. So, and finally, the other thing we can do is we can actually decrypt um, PSM developer packages as well. So, um, so here we have P at Battle PSM. This is a homebrew I made for PS Mobile. It's encrypted with um, standard PSM plus keys. Here are the PSM plus key files here. So, all we want to do is pi, decrypt pi. Um, you want to specify the folder to it, and then you want to specify kdev.p12, and then plus asterisk plus.keyring. Alright, if you specify it like that, then it will be able to decrypt the files there as well. You see, there we go. It's decrypting. Awesome, and now if we check over here, once again, by Apple PSM application, app.exe. See here, this program cannot be run in DOS mode, so it's decrypted. And of course, we can run this in the simulator as well. <laughs> 